Hi everyone, we're back looking at Game Builder Garage today, specifically making sprites and using the texture editor. If you've been following my channel recently, you'll know I've been playing a fair bit of WarioWare DIY, a DS game from 2009 in which you build your own micro games. One of the most enjoyable aspects of that game for me is drawing pixel art to use as assets within the game. While Game Builder Garage has a greater focus on 3D elements, it appears sprite creation will be possible in GBG as well. In this video, we'll go over the texture editor UI and look at some of the unique and unexpected ways 2D elements are incorporated into a selection of the 3D games Nintendo has showcased so far. First, let's familiarize ourselves with the texture editor UI. In the column on the left, starting at the top and working our way down, we have texture face, which we'll get to in a moment. Next, we have size, position, and rotation, all fairly self-explanatory. However, note that there is a z-axis position value. This is because textures can be moved forwards and backwards in 3D space. Moving along the top, we have a set of buttons. These are undo, redo, and clear. And after that, we have mirror, which flips the content of the canvas, and rotate. This is different to the rotation over on the left, as it refers to the orientation of the artwork in the canvas, rather than the object the texture belongs to. You see, in Game Builder Garage, textures are actually applied to objects such as cubes, spheres, or cylinders, rather than just existing as true 2D sprites. For example, the cat's basket here is a texture wrapped around a cylinder. It's possible that there are other simple shapes that can be textured, but cube, sphere, and cylinder are the three that I've been able to confirm so far. That's the reason we have the texture face option I referred to earlier. It allows us to switch between multiple faces of the 3D object we're texturing. With that covered, let's go back to the UI. Over on the right, we have a pencil, eraser, paint bucket, and eyedropper tool. Beside those, we have a hand icon. I believe this is for moving the viewport across your canvas when zoomed in, but I wasn't able to confirm this. Next, we have three brush sizes and a mysterious icon. This could either be a brush size selector, or it may be a brush of its own used to create strokes that taper at the beginning and the end, just like a real paintbrush. We also have our palette, which is comprised of nine colors or eight colors and transparency. Transparency can be used for sprites or textures that have unique shapes and cutouts. Tapping on the cog on the second row is how you'll select and change your palette. And last, but definitely not least, we have the option to turn on guides, which will make working on detailed sprites a lot easier. Now that we've gone over the UI, let's look at some games. I've collated nearly every game we've seen so far that includes drawn textures or sprites, and I'm gonna try and point out how those elements are used. This is gonna be fairly rapid fire. So wish me luck. In this first game, the HUD, the water, and the helicopters are all drawn with sprites. So is the logo in Tuna Cube Factory Part 2. In this game, every element has been made in the texture editor, from the backgrounds, Princess, the sword projectile, and the off-brand Mr. Game & Watch, who has at least four unique frames of animation. In this rather dry puzzle game, the blocks are sprites, and so is the piece selector. Here, the cards are sprites, and so is the character's eyebrows. This isn't necessarily indication that we can texture complex pre-made models, though. It's more likely their sprites placed slightly in front of the character model. It looks like both the ship and the projectiles here are sprites. Here, the ball spawner at the top is the flat side of a textured cylinder, and the balls are textured spheres. This game is called Cosmic War, and everything but the player character is made of textures here. This is a great example of how much can be done in 2.5D. Same again here with this game called Alien Shooting. Don't be fooled, this isn't Cyberpunk 2077. It's actually Neo Node City, and we can see a fancy emissive or bloom effect being used here to make the textured objects glow. This game is called Ghost Gauntlet, and we actually see a sprite rotate around the z-axis here. This game, and this game, both use textures for the floors. And so does this one, except it's creatively applied to a sphere for that Animal Crossing Wild World flavor. And lastly we have Node on Cake Shop. This has shown up in nearly every video Nintendo's put out, nicely blends 2D and 3D. It's also worth noting that the little baker in the bottom right corner is made of three distinct sprites, their body, the bowl, and the hand with the whisk. The cake mix is also a 3D effect. Oh, and the ice cream cone is actually a textured cylinder. Now, just before I wrap up the video, I have a few miscellaneous details to note. As you may be aware, certain USB mice can be used with GBG when the switch is in docked mode. The mouse cursor can be seen in this clip and will make drawing a lot easier. One feature that we haven't seen yet is the ability to turn on onion skinning. Onion skinning is a feature often used in animation software to see the previous frame overlaid on your current frame. This would make things like walk cycles, for example, much easier. Another subtle but important detail is that sprites cast shadows that respect transparency. This can be best seen in Tuna Cube Factory the second, where the logo can be seen shadowed on the floor. And that's everything for this video. If I missed anything, let me know in the comments. I'll be streaming GBG once it goes live, so why not subscribe? Buh bye bye